Hey, this is Pastor Tom. Thanks for joining me as we look at Isaiah 7. We've been studying the Psalms the past few weeks, but it's getting close to Christmas. So we're going to switch gears and spend a couple of weeks looking at important prophecies about the birth of Christ from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 7.14 is a really well-known prophecy remembered during this Christmas season. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That verse is quoted in the book of Matthew. And in that place, the virgins clearly marry, who has conceived Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, and is born the Savior, who is indeed God in the flesh. But when we look at Isaiah 7, there's a lot of extra information and confusing details. I'm going to read the verses and ask some key questions to get us thinking about the passage. Verses 10 through 14 read, Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. God offered to provide an incredible sign to Ahaz. So why does he refuse? And then why does God then speak to the house of David and himself choose? the sign of Emmanuel. As I read the next verses, I'm going to emphasize all the time references. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the good and choose the evil. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. So, where and when did all these references happen? Verses 18 through 19 mention several places. In that day, the Lord will whistle for the fly that is at the end of the streams of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they will all come and settle in the steep ravines, and in the clefts of the rocks, and on all the thorn bushes, and all on all the pastures. Why are the fly from Egypt and the bee from Assyria mentioned? And why are they coming to such hostile places such as these steep ravines and clefts and thorn bushes? Verse 20 paints a mental picture of a barber. In that day, the Lord will shave with a razor that is hired beyond the river with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it will sweep away the beard also. So who is being shaved by the king of Assyria? And what does having all that hair removed imply? Verses 21 and following switch to an agricultural image. In that day, a man will keep alive a young cow and two sheep. And because of the abundance of milk that they give, he will eat curds for everyone who is left in the land will eat curds and honey. Back up in verse 15, the boy Emmanuel will eat curds and honey. So is this a good or bad thing? And how is this different than what life was like before? The last verses are clearly a bad situation. Look at all the references to briars and thorns. In that day, every place where there used to be a thousand vines worth a thousand shekels of silver will become briars and thorns. With bow and arrows a man will come there, for all the land will be briars and thorns. And as for all the hills that used to be hoed with a hoe, you will not come there for fear of briars and thorns, but they will become a place where cattle are let loose and where sheep tread. So what happened to make the land this way? Those are a lot of questions. So make sure to read over all of Isaiah 7 sometime this week and do the digging deeper exercises where you look for repeated words and ideas in this passage. I'm looking forward to discovering the meaning with you. God's blessing on your week.